Well, hello there. My name is Ian Antonio Patterson, and I am so happy to be able to welcome you today to this extra special episode of the English Coach Podcast, episode 67. And why is this special? Well, today I am actually taking the leap to do a video podcast. So at this point, I want to invite you specially. If you're listening to this in your normal podcast player, I'm going to invite you to just, you know, press that little info button if you want or whenever you want. And at the end of this spoken part, you can also, or if you want now, you can head on over to the show notes page. And from that info button in your podcast player, it will take you to the real official show notes page for this episode. And there you'll be able to watch this video. You'll be able to see what you're hearing. And it's not only me that you'll be seeing, because another reason why this particular episode is special, it's because I'm introducing the art of a very good friend of mine, and I think you'll find it very interesting. Now, why am I here today? And why does this episode exist? Now, the first reason is that I want to introduce you to something that is actually long overdue, but it's a project that I worked on with a friend of mine, a young lady called Pia, Pia Schnackenberg, and we worked on a project over a year ago where she actually danced as a professional dancer, a trainer of dance, an actress, I would say, and she now calls herself a student of the fine arts. Pia Schnackenberg helped me to express a grammar concept using dance. And I was so reverent towards this piece, a little bit over-reverent, I think, you know, in retrospect, But it's not because I was afraid to publish it or anything, but, you know, I wanted to do it proper justice. That kind of thing takes a professional, and she did a very good job, and I wanted to publish this in the right space, within the right framework, and at the right time. There is no better time than now to publish it. And that is the first reason why this video podcast exists. So be sure to head on over to EnglishCoachPodcast.com and look for the show notes for episode 67 if you want to see it. Now, the second reason why I'm doing this is because, you know, over the past two weeks, three weeks, four weeks even, I struggled a little bit because, you know, I couldn't figure out for myself or decide for myself whether I had the right to publish anything that was jovial or fun or even uplifting, simply because there are so many bad things happening in the world. And it took me quite a while. I mean, you know, I do have a few fans out there. Maybe some of you have been waiting and wondering why an episode hasn't been published and so on. And You know, there are also a few more collaborations that I'm working with. Um, Particularly, I've been working with a lady called Anna, and I've been working with Fadida and Binta as well. And we've been thinking of doing some new projects. And, you know, I mean, with this war thing that's going on, it just put a damper on everything together with the corona crisis and so on. And, you know, I just didn't feel as if I had the right to publish anything. You know, I felt as if the only thing I should be putting out there is, you know, sad stories of the pain that a lot of people are suffering, not only in Ukraine, but in all parts of the world. And, you know, this disappointment that I had with humanity as a whole prevented me as a creative from putting stuff out. But, you know, I'm kind of over that right now because I spoke to another friend of mine two days ago. She's also from East Europe. And we ascertained for ourselves that the interesting and artful stories that are put forward by our leaders sometimes have absolutely nothing to do with the interesting and artful stories that we put out into the world as people, as, as, as creatives. You know, and when you really think of it as well, you know, I ascertained for myself that these leaders, 
they have more in common with their peers and their counterparts than they have to do with us. So the things that they put out, the stories that they put out are totally different from what we would put out, you know, um, the stories of the people on the ground. So, you know, I want to encourage everybody out there to continue to put out your creative stuff, continue to put out your uplifting messages of art, which should be a reflection or both a reflection of what is and also a reflection of what could be. So, you know, I hope you can find the courage. I hope you can find the space, the headspace to continue to put your stuff out there. Expression of art is very important. And it is also something that gives us a hint, gives us a glimpse of realities or worlds that could be separate and apart from the stories that sometimes come down trickling down to us from above right so you know i mean this is my opportunity i'm happy i am i consider myself lucky to be able to you know speak freely um not being too political now this is common knowledge but um if you have the chance to put something uplifting out into the world do it right now is the time when your fans and my few fans that I might have are actually looking forward to something, you know, some kind of pleasant distraction even from all the bad things that are happening happening in the world, not just Corona, not just in, in uh, Ukraine, but in all these other war-stricken, war-torn places in the world, all these people who are suffering, all these people who have to move from their homes. It's not just from Ukraine that we have refugees, but we have people or asylum seekers leaving their homes for reasons that they have nothing to do with. Yeah, There are other people who also face these struggles. They also need an uplifting message from time to time. Anyway, that is the second reason. It is a note of encouragement. If you're a creator, continue creating. Now, everything that you see here is actually DIY. This is me also giving myself permission to, you know, use what I've learned, you know, the, the things that I've taught myself, so to speak, or in German we say autodidact, the knowledge that I have sought out. Well, you know, you don't really teach yourself anything, but you seek out knowledge that fits to your particular learning goal. And this is what I did for my photography skill. Um, everything you see here, the video, um, that came from my preoccupation with photography, as some of you probably already know. And through photography and videography, I also got into sound and the sound knowledge that I went out and I found for myself, you know, the sound treatment and the sound editing and all of that. This is a result of me going out there into the world and finding this, this knowledge for myself. So I encourage you as well to the same way I do photography, um, and it's actually a hobby that I sometimes do in a professional way, that can lead to greater things. So don't see it as a waste of time. You never know. If you love it, do it. I love photography. I love publishing now um, podcasts. Um, some of you follow the show. Some of you like it sometimes, maybe all the time. All of this came from just me finding a passion and following it. And I kid you not, that passion of photography, it actually helped me to go through a very rough time a few years ago when there was like sickness in the family and all of that. And I had absolutely no other way of escaping. I call it at the time escaping to sanity. And it was this search of beauty, this search of framing beauty, flowers and dance and all these wonderful things that helped me to avoid a very serious depression a very long time ago. So, you know, I mean, creative work, being creative, creative expression is something that I would encourage all of you to do. It's also something that drives the initiative of this podcast. I encourage my learners of English to try to incorporate their learning experience into their hobbies. Because you know what? If you are 
incorporating, as I said, getting this language exercise into something you like, then it will not feel like work. Whatever it might be, it could be cooking, it could be sewing, it could be gardening. Just look for some videos in your target language and watch them. Maybe you understand already, if you already have the meaning and you see it in your target language, then the meaning will be solidified even more, right? It will be fest or concretized in your mind. So it's not just a waste of time. It's not just something we do because we have nothing else to do. You know, working with a hobby, working with creative things is something that can blossom and unfold into things that you never expected, right? And again, the example, I never learned German in a formal framework, you know, that helped a little bit. But where I actually learned my German was in informal settings, right? I've said that many times and I will say it again. Many of the people who I know who are very fluent in language, they learned it from films, from music, pop music, reggae music, right? Um, R&B music, all of these things. That is how they found um fluency, right? So don't underestimate these free time activities. Many people learn from gaming, right? So, you know, you see it and you think it's light and you think it's probably, you think it's not important, but these things are important and these things will help you. So again, coming to why we are here, the creative endeavor that encouraged and inspired this episode comes from Pia, Pia Schnackenberg. Her link will be in the show notes just under her video, but be sure to check out Pia also on Instagram. Pia Schnackenberg. Together, written together with at before, right? And you can always find the link if you don't know how it's spelled. Just check out the show notes page and you can see it. So that was the purpose for this episode. That is the purpose for this episode existing. I'm very proud. And I want to say thank you again to Pia. Pia, it was fantastic and the only reason why it took so long to publish is because i had so much respect for it that i wanted to do proper justice to your work and i want to thank you again for taking the leap with me i hope you like the video and i hope you viewers like it as well please give pia support and you know visit her her Instagram, you know, send her some love, you know, give her some likes, tell her where you saw her video. And, you know, I mean, it wasn't really an idea that came from her. I just wanted to put together an interesting way for doing something that's usually seen as dry grammar. Yeah. Now she has danced uh, a grammar concept. I'm not going to tell you what grammar concept it is. I can give you a hint and tell you that it's something having to do with time forms, but that's all you're going to get from me. If you want to see what it is, watch the video yourself. All right. I am also looking forward to hearing from you. I hope you like it. I hope you share it with all your friends. And, you know, I'm not going to talk anymore. This is a short one and it's all about these three things that I told you about. So without further ado, as I always say on my podcasts, with a small win is always a good way to begin. I am looking forward to hearing from you and bye for now.